we all know that music from Star Wars. Great. <laughs> Couldn't do a thing like this without throwing it from Star Wars. The reality is, uh, no, it's not Mahler. No, it's not Stravinsky. But it's fun. It's still great music. And you still need to sound good. And like I said, if you're not necessarily going to go the classical orchestral route, um, you're going to probably play in some regional band someday. You're going to play in a community orchestra that plays outdoor concerts. Well, those orchestras and those ensembles, they play John Williams. That's what they do more than anything else. John Williams and John Philip Sousa, right? So bass drum cymbals, lots of that kind of stuff. Um, the traditional sort of bass drum cymbal attached, that's that basic technique. Um, I sort of just developed this over the years. I like my cymbals to be in the right hand. I like sort of the striking cymbal to be in the right hand. And I don't like having something on the instrument that I'm playing. It's just hard to negotiate a cymbal way up here. It gets, you get tired a lot quicker. Um, for me, it doesn't necessarily feel natural to play bass drum in the left hand, but it feels much more natural to just take, I've literally got a, a cymbal stand and I've just inverted a crash cymbal. And it's not, you know, no, it's not as good. It doesn't sound as good as when I'm playing it in the air. But you get it the right way, and you can actually get a pretty decent sound out of it. So that's a lot of fun. That's something I do. I'd say I play as many crashes that way now as I do upright. So questions about the John Williams? Yes, of course. Shane has a question. Um, that's great. No, far away. Uh, on the bass drum, I've never seen it reversed like that, but it's a great idea, even just to get the crash the ball out instead of on yeah. On the bass drum, I noticed you choked up on the bass drum now. Is that just for the leverage, or is there a particular reason? I have to tell you, I couldn't have told you that I was doing that. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, probably just because they kind of have the muffle in the way. Yeah. Um, and probably also just to get the angle. So yeah, I mean, now that I think about that, feels a little bit awkward. This just gives me a little more, a little more control. Mm -hmm. I also choked up in the Mahler excerpt um, when I got to the, the triplets. I, I choked up so I had that, I had that. Okay. The same thing you'll actually see people like with uh, with Bolero with the snare drum, not on tambourine like before, but on okay. you know on the snare drum you'll see people take the sticks and, and start the excerpt like way up here, so they have really got a lot of control really soft, and then as they get louder, they you see them kind of work their way back while they're playing the solo, you know, for the 15 minutes that it takes to play. Mm -hmm. um, that scares the crap out of me. I can't. Okay. I just don't trust myself. To, it's hard enough to play it normally. I don't want to negotiate a whole lot of tricky stuff with something really soft like that. Okay, let's do a couple simple. Such as I was thinking of the uh, the shot, no, not the shot, the um, 
guess it was. It was the the uh, España, the excerpt where I had to start with it inverted. You have to figure out how to have your tambourine in the position you need it before you start. Um, something like in the uh, in the Carnival Overture, I can make flipping it over part of the note. You know that's you can't really hear that I'm flipping it. You just hear it because it's happening simultaneously. The job race starts with those three really soft notes, and then got that. But if I and I've encountered this, it's an awful feeling. I've been in a recording session before, and my tambourine part was coming up, and I didn't have it flipped. What are you gonna do in a recording session? <laughs> I had to literally on the fly figure out how to do it the reverse of the way I had done it before. I don't know if they took that take or not. I couldn't tell. It actually sounded okay. So, <laughs> all right. Last thing. Let's uh, talk about the God crashes and. Send you guys on to the press line. All right, uh, let's have track 23. This is sort of the sort of the opposite of Tchaikovsky in a lot of ways. Um, still, a very important principle um, is I'm not trying to say without like criticizing specific people, but I'm not a big fan of kind of that whole when the plates come together, the sort of there's kind of a, a grunt like a, a push together. I really think that. Symbols are hard enough to play without providing your own tension into something that's stiff and metallic. You need to approach it to me as a very friendly kind of soft stroke. Now, for something like Chai, it's a little more articulate. Yes, you have to use a little more force and a little bit more, a little bit more oomph. But watch how I play these uh, Mazorsky crashes. Big, loud. Again, it's the end of the pictures of an exhibition. The great need to Kiev. Again, very big, Russian, and very, very wet sound. All right. Let's have uh, track twenty-three. Thank <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. You were great audience.